All right, everyone, so we will continue now. We've got our basic fav icon loaded up here. But I want to now set up a couple of other types of fav icons that will look better for modern devices. Uh, and uh, we need to do this in a different way. Uh, these other kinds of icons that we're going to create do not need to be ICO files anymore. So we're actually going to deal with uh, a few icons types here. Uh, favicon.ico is the classic type of favicon for older browsers. And then two new ones that we're going to work with. We can set ourselves up with a favicon.ping uh, or .png. This is a more modern favicon. And this one actually we can uh, get larger sizes, like let's say a good size would be uh, 48 by 48 pixels. The one up here, the classic one, is only 16 by 16. And then we're going to deal with those uh, with that other platform, uh, Apple devices. And for them, we're going to have uh, a special kind of fave icon, and theirs is called the Apple Touch icon. Dot ping. And on that one, we'll go with a higher... Well, that's only for iOS. Uh, and that one, uh, we can go much higher resolutions, up to 128 by 128 pixels. So we've done the... We're working on the, the basic one right now with dynamic drive. And with favicon.cc, we make the basic one. These other ones, we can really use any graphics software. Photoshop, Fireworks, Illustrator, Microsoft Paint. Yes. So I went to Microsoft.com slash Favicon. ICO. And it's 128. And it's a what? 128 by 128. A Microsoft's icon is that big? OK. Uh, I don't doubt but that. I think it, it gets downsized. Yes, uh, I, I, but is it a .png or .ico? .ico. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, I guess, you know, there's sort of an arms race to this about at least the basic one should work, and then people want to put these high-quality retina display versions so they make them larger and larger, and the web browsers are smart enough to shrink them down to the appropriate size. Yes? So, can you put a a script in your file, like we had a script that, that looks at the navigator browser agent to see what device, and then if it's a certain device, do a, a link to your to the Apple, to the yeah. app, your Apple Fave icon, and if it's Android, do a link to a different. Yeah, we definitely. We definitely could do that, but we don't really need to because as long as we provide references to these three files, the appropriate one will get loaded anyway. So we're going to have these three at once, and it's a few lines of code, a few bytes of code, and then three versions of the picture on, on the site, and we've covered all the bases. We could do some JavaScript and such to detect it, but not quite necessary, I think. So these are the three we're going to deal with. We've got the first one done. The other two as I said, uh, they can be plain old ping files, and it's recommended that they're ping files, PNG files. So um, again, this is, here's a little bit in, in uh, web design notes. Uh, a .gif file is a, is a file that's been around since around 1987, and uh, it's limited to only 256 colors. So that looks good for a basic kind of graphic like a logo. Oftentimes logos are basic colors. Think of the IBM logo. It's just the letters IBM in blue. Think about the Nike logo. It's just a swoosh with different colors perhaps. The Apple logo. It's the Apple symbol. Think about all the classic icons and how basic they are. Uh, and they can be rendered in basic amount of colors. So GIF is a file format of graphics limited to 256 colors. And it also has transparency. Later on, in around 1992 or 94 or so, the early 90s, we got JPEGs, which allowed us to have up to 16 million colors. So that's great for photographs. 
So the photograph of a person with this light, you have all of this variation in the skin tone because of all the shadows and highlights. That's harder to produce in a 256 color palette. So think about a GIF as very good also for cartoons. Bugs Bunny looks good as a GIF, but perhaps none of these uh, modern type of cartoons, like, um, what's a modern cartoon that's very colorful? Um, anything from Pixar, let's say, uh, with all of those shades and textures and tones and such. That looks good as a JPEG. It's got lots of colors, or specifically a photo. The thing is that JPEG is good, but it has no transparency. Somewhere in the middle, but came but developed later in 1998, I believe, is .png or .ping. And that one can have... Um, it can be in a mode where it shows 256 colors or JPEG level quality, actually the next level of colors, which is 32-bit colors, which I believe is about 1 billion colors, and transparency. Transparency. Um, so you run into ping files much more nowadays, especially in apps, because they can have uh, transparency, which is very good, because you don't want to have a white background behind your icon on your app. You want transparency. JPEG does not offer that. And ping offers lots of colors. So you can, um, you can have full photorealistic uh, pictures and such. And the compression quality of a, of a limited color ping is much better than a GIF. And actually, the standards nowadays, like this Apple fav icon that we're going to talk about, the standard is make this as a ping, because it has transparency and it has all of these uh, range of colors. So we're going to make our modern fav icons as ping files. BMP, you don't really run into them as much anymore. They're very specialized. They're, they're, they used to be a Windows, Microsoft Windows specific file format that you would create and really only use in Windows. And their file size is really big. And I forget their exact pros and cons, but the big con is really you don't find them on the web. You don't really see them in apps. The trade-off is that they're too, their file size is too large. They're, they're, they're not very, uh, they don't have compression so they're not efficient to use. Uh, so what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to introduce you then to this uh, graphics editing tool. Uh, on these computers, I believe, we have Photoshop, but we're not going to use Photoshop, because Photoshop, not every computer has it. If you want Photoshop, you're going to have to pay. It ranges between a lot of money and a lot of money. <laughs> so. We're going to show you, I'm going to show you this other tool that has a much more affordable price. And it's web based. So go ahead and open up your favorite web browser, uh, Firefox, Chrome, whatever. Uh, I'm in Chrome, and let's go to this website here. In true web 2.0 fashion, there's a vowel missing here pixlr.com, P I X L R.com. Let's go to pixlr.com. Yes. Can you do. You can. Photoshop Elements is, is actually more, more powerful than you think, and I've used both, and you can do a lot of what we're going to talk about in Elements as well. Oh, really? That's cool, because, you know, definitely paint used to come with it, and now it's, uh, it's very limited. And Photoshop, full Photoshop, definitely can be expensive, and Elements is a good alternative. So here we have Pixlr.com, and I just saw this yesterday, but uh, the thing about Pixlr is they've been around, well, I've heard of Pixlr, and I've used Pixlr for a long time also, probably seven, six, seven, eight years. What I just found out was that they were just bought, they were just acquired by Autodesk. So if you're into the world of CAD and all of that, you've heard of Autodesk. So Autodesk uh, has, um, has bought little old Pixlr, and we'll see what they do with it. But what Pixlr is, is a, an online or offline browser-based uh, or native app for Mac or Windows that is um, 
a graphics editor. So if we scroll down, we've got Pixlr Editor, Pixlr Express, and Pixlr Omatic. We're going to use Pixlr Editor, which is basically Photoshop in the cloud for free. So let's check it out here. Click Pixlr Editor, launch web app for free for the moment. We'll see if Autodesk changes things. Hopefully they don't. Uh, but Pixlr Editor, launch web app here. And that brings up then a start screen about would you like to create a new image, open an image from your browser, open an image from an address, from your library, or etc. I'm going to click Create New Image. And then we have, what size would you like to work with? Well, <coughs> we're going to be creating high-quality favicon files. So it's better to create a large file and shrink it down as necessary. So we want to start with one of the larger sizes of favicons. So we're going to create in uh, 128 wide by 128 tall with transparency. On our name, uh, I guess we could call it Fave Icon. <coughs> so if you've used Photoshop or other graphics software, you know you go to File, New, and it asks you what dimensions and such do you want to work with. Same thing here. So 128 by 128, transparent. Click OK. And then you get an interface that might be reminiscent of Photoshop if you've used it. Again, how many of you have used uh, any version of Photoshop before? Okay, so this should be a bit familiar. Even the keyboard shortcuts are familiar. If I press B, I get my brush tool, and I can start to draw with my brush tool. Control Z to take it back. So, again, this topic that, that we're going to look at here uh, for some of you, you'll be right at home because you have a little bit of experience in graphics, and then for others, well, you might not have done any graphic or, or uh, gra graphic design before, so it might be brand new. But what I like here is with Pixlr, we have a, a free tool where we can create, create our own high-quality graphics, save it as a PNG file, as a ping file, and once we do that, then we write the proper code to display this graphic as our Apple icon or Android icon. So, yes. It uh, it's not going to show 128 dots. That's the the usual representation for transparency. When something is a checkerboard, that means it's transparent because you can't show something that is invisible. So the graphics software usually displays that as a checkerboard. But it is 128 because it tells me right there. So you, I mean, can you address 128 pixels? Say that again? So, so these are all, does it represent pixel each? No. No, because I, if I get my, uh, my pencil and I make it one sized pixel and I click, You know, that's, you know, four pixels right there. So these squares are not representative of the pixels. It's just a generic way to show transparency. And anyway, we're too large at 128 to really deal in a pixel level. You know, we're at 16 pixels, then we can deal it that way, even maybe 32 pixel size. But at 128, our, our sprite, our graphic is too big to really deal in a pixel by pixel level. So what do we have here? We've got uh, tools on the left side, the brush tool, which allows us to draw with a paintbrush that has fuzzy edges. We have options on our, whenever we select a tool, we have options at the top, such as how big do we make our brush. This one says 50 pixels. So one click here is already about 50 pixels sized. I can go here to smaller size. I can go to shapes. Look at that, I get a few shapes here that I can play with. So that I can start to design my fave icon. 
So right here, size 60, I can even make a larger size. I can change my color. Down here I've got a, uh, a set main color button. I'm currently drawing with black. I can select there and pick any color in the spectrum. If I know my color code from HTML, I can plug it in there. I have a brush, I have a pencil. A pencil, a pencil is uh, oftentimes a very hard-edged tool. I have more complex things like stamps and blurs and all of that we don't really need to get into but what we'll do is I'll give you a few minutes just experiment with this for a moment draw something create a, a shape or a design or something I uh, remember that this is eventually going to be used as a kind of a fave icon but you're not going to be limited down to that tiny 16 pixel size think about the sizes that you see on your phone on your mobile device that's kind of the size we're going for which is which ranges between 48 32 pixels up to 128 pixels so the size that you've got here of your icons that's kind of what you're shooting for this size that we've got here so even if we cut this in half it's still a pretty large sized graphic so I'm going to give you a moment just to uh, work a bit, and then we'll uh, we'll continue. Yes. If you want to get these shapes, the way I did it was I went to the brush tool first, and then up on top it says what sort of brush shape do you want, and you click here. You've got a few shapes.
So you can load up pictures and <laughs> yeah, you can even use Pixlr to open an existing picture and work on the picture. Red eye of correction and uh, the cloning and all of that. Like Photoshop. We're about to but once we once we've created something that we'll take it from there. Give everyone one more minute and then we'll go on. We just design something, draw something, and then we'll talk about saving the file and then adding it to our project. Now another way that you can create fav icons is with text. We've got a text tool, uh, this little A down here, and you can use fonts. That's another way to make these icons if you're not artistically inclined. So if I click and I say I want a different font, I, I don't get a preview like I might be used to in Photoshop, but if I if I click and just type a letter V and a size and a color and such. I can choose different fonts. I get the preview once I hover over the font. And these are the fonts that I've got built into, into my computer. So let's say I'm happy with this. Whatever you have at the moment, we're going to go on now. But um, I've got this project that I've been working on, and oops, if my computer goes off, I lose it. 
I haven't saved it yet. And remember, this is running on the web. So again, if you don't have internet connection, then you can't even do this. But let's say we've everything's uh, working well here. Let's go up to our file menu and select Save. So we have a few ways to save this. First of all, location and then specifics. Uh, we want save to my computer. I want to save this onto the desktop so I can use it in my project. But notice I can save it directly to Facebook, Flickr, or Picasa. And I've got the, my own Pixlr library that I can set up. I can create a free account and save my graphics there. But we want to save this to our computer. If you haven't selected a name, go ahead and type fave icon. And then... Um, Format, this tells you JPEG, good for most photos. Well, as I said earlier, we're going to be working with ping files, PNG files. And did you notice, when it was on JPEG, it gives it a white background, and when you put it on ping, it obeys your transparency. That's what we want. When you've got your app or your website on your device with a background color or background texture, now you're going to see it as opposed to being that clunky white background. So select ping, click OK, and it'll probably ask you to save the file, so I'm going to save it to my project folder. September 30th, and I'll save it to the root level, just like I had my previous fave icon. I'm going to save it to the root level, and technically, the two things that I'm going to show you don't really need to have the name fave icon, but I'm going to keep that name just for consistency. Make sure that it's got dot .ping at the end. You won't see your previous fave icon because I'm saving as a ping, therefore it doesn't show me that other icon because it was in .ico format. But save this on your September 30th folder. Save it to your September 30th folder, and then we should have something like that. There's the index file that checks your web browser. There's the favicon.ico file. And here's our favicon.ping file we just created. All right, so did everyone save their ping file? Okay, so again, this is a two-pronged approach. We need the graphic, number one, and we need the code, number two. We've got the graphic, now let's do the code. Uh, so let's go back to Notepad, and we'll do it first to the index file on the root level, the basic one, the, the one that uh, does the browser sniffing. So uh, back to that index file, and we should see our, our link of a rel shortcut icon. So here, now let's add our code for this more modern fave icon. After, uh, after this existing favicon.ico file, we'll add another link tag. And again, that'll need a rel, and it'll need an href. So I'm just going to put in the very basic skeleton of code here. I know that my href will be favicon.png because it links to my new, modern, higher quality graphic. 
As for the rel, the relationship, we set that as icon, rel equals icon, and we need one more attribute. After rel icon, we will add type. What type of icon? What format of icon? So we have link rel is icon, type is something, and href is the fav icon ping file. And type is going to be set to image slash png. All right, so this is the this is the code for the more modern fav icon. If I save and run it, I probably won't see any change. But if I look at this on my mobile device or save it as a bookmark like I showed earlier, it should grab the higher quality graphic. So this uh, this works well for modern web browsers, for Android devices. This new line that we just added. Now we will add the we will add the Apple version of the icon. Question? Oh, you are? Okay, good. You may see it also. In Chrome or Firefox? Uh, this is in Firefox. Okay. Yeah, so we can save it and test it and we'll see... We'll see that graphic. If we switch to two lines of code, then it should That's a good point. Um, I'll try it. Let's see what happens. I would assume that because the order that it goes in, it wants to load the last one. So let's try that. Just to be safe, I'm also going to clear out my history, which I guess it does. Yeah, so it went in the order, and it loaded up the old ugly one. And I'll switch the order again as I had it here, and it should then load up the modern one. You're not seeing that? Even when you switch these two lines. That's what I did. I, I made this line first, and then this line second. So if it does or doesn't, it, it should work because of the order of, of uh, how we write this. The last fav icon that we write, that's the one it'll try to load. All right, so we've got this fav icon which, uh, which shows up. Uh, I introduced Pixlr to you. And uh, this is a version of the fav icon for more modern browsers and for Android devices. And now let's talk about making a, an Apple device specific icon. And here again is where we, this, f for the purposes of this class, we'll do this. But then when we get to the Android portion of things, it'll be a moot point. Because eventually we're, in the next class, in the next month, we're going to be targeting Android development. The end result of this class is our basic app. And then after this, on the next month, we're going to focus on Android development because, as I said, we cannot create an iPhone app unless we're on a Mac. These are not Macs. So we're going to need to go for Android-specific development. But this end result, you should be able to then port it to the different devices. So this code that we're about to write then for Apple-specific icon, we're going to remove it anyway. We're going to remove, the sh we're going to remove all three of these anyway that we're going to create. We're going to remove them all because they don't have a place in the actual app when we actually make it an Android app. So for the purposes of this class, this is what we want, but when we get to the next class, we need to remove them. And again, because eventually it's going to be a moot point, I'm going to cut some corners here. Technically, we should have uh, an icon that is created to the specifications that Apple says, <coughs> which we can look up as Apple Web clip icon. 
if you want the full details, you can look up Apple Web Clip Icon, and you should get some link that says Web Clip Icons at Apple Developer website. And that'll tell you, here's the sizes for your Retina iPad, and here's the sizes for your classic iPod Touch, and here's the size for this and this and that. And as I said, it's going to be a moot point for us, but we'll do one at least. Uh, so if we get the details straight from the horse's mouth, we're going to see somewhere here that it's got the sizes. Here we go. So these developer resources we're, we're going to be looking into, specifically the um, specifically the Android developer tools when we start with that next month. But you see here what we would have to deal with because now there's different sizes. There's the new iPhone 6 Plus if you're keeping track of, of Apple. And uh, you see these dimensions web clip icon recommended for web apps and websites. So here they're saying make it 180 by 180. We made ours 128. Um, this next level here is 120. This is 152 for the iPad, I believe. Yeah, the iPad. iPad 2. So that's for retina size, and that's for the most basic size. So we don't have any of the exact size for these devices. And again, I'm not going to deal with making a graphic for all of these. I think the modern um, thing that they do is if you if you put the largest size, I think it shrinks to the appropriate one, but it may or may not. So 120 is the is the closest size that I have. So that means that I can go back to Pixlr and change the size of my 128 size icon, just clip out a few pixels to make it 120, and then we'll write the code. So I've still got my Pixlr file open, I think. Yep, there it is. So I'm back on Pixlr, and I want to change image menu canvas size, or image size image size will take my current document and shrink it down to whatever I tell it. Canvas size will remove excess pixels, like taking scissors and cutting out the excess. Um, you're probably going to be safer changing image size because if your, icon, if your content is too close to the edge and you change the canvas size, you might lose something. So I'm going to do this. Image, image size, 120. If you leave constrained proportions on, it automatically changes the height if you change the width, or vice versa. So I've uh, resized this to the appropriate dimensions. I need to file and um, save again. Select ping. And then the file name needs to be changed to be apple-touch-icon. So save it as a ping with transparency, change its name to this, and just to confirm, you changed the size 
of your image to 120 by 120. So I'm saving it to the root level of my project with that name. Save. And then we'll write our code. So I've got my fav icon, which will be for the older browsers. I've got my fav icon ping for uh, Android browsers. And I've got my Apple icon, one of them, for my Apple devices. And then the code, back to Notepad. One more line here. We've had uh, these other two lines. We'll need one more line. This is another link. It's also going to need a rel. It's also going to need an href. The href is, the href is easy. It's the name that we just created. Apple touch icon dot ping. In the rel, so that this document knows what you're linking to, and this will only matter if you're on an iOS device, the rel is apple touch icon. Apple dash touch dash icon. Not according to the specification. So what this will do is if someone visits your, your web app, your website, on an Apple device, and they select to save to the home screen, it'll take this icon and put it on the home screen. And by default, it'll add, um, well, I don't know if it's default anymore now that they've moved to iOS 7 with a flatter design. But in the old days, they would add a little bit of a gloss to the, to the icon automatically. So I guess now, nowadays, because they're on a flatter design, they don't do that. But here now, we've touched, uh, we've covered the bases of the, of, the popular, of the popular platforms. Now, the documentation I saw also included a sizes parameter. If it was different from the basic size? Well, if it was, yeah, because if it was different than the 60 by 60 that is the, the default, that, uh, then they want you to do, in this case, 120 by 120. Okay, we should do that then. I don't know why I didn't show it on this over here. So that one was a parameter of size or sizes? Sizes. Plural. Sizes, and that was... 120 by 120. Okay. So somewhere in the bowels of the documentation, it says technically, depending on the size of the icon that you've put, you should also have a, an attribute here, a parameter that says what's the size that, you, that you're serving. Notice that it's very proprietary. It doesn't load up here. It doesn't change color because it it's not standard HTML, but if an, an iOS device looks at it and understands it, it'll use it. Non-iOS devices will ignore it. So to fully see if it works, you would need to upload it to a web server, test it out, and you get the nice little icon. So trust me, or trust James. <laughs> Yes. If you opened it in Safari, would it still use your regular icons as a pane, or would it try to do the Apple Touch one? I think it'll only work on a on an on an iOS device because 
Safari, technically, then if you're looking at it on your desktop version, it's not touch. And this is looking for touch capabilities. There may be some situation where if you're saving a link to the desktop or something like that, where it tries to use a better link. It could, and that's why we want to cover as many bases as possible. Notice that we have up to, you know, retina-sized. So even on the newest devices, 180 by 180, or iPad retina sizes and such, there's all of these dimensions to deal with. So this is the, the march of time and progress that um, higher, uh, higher resolutions and DPI, and then we, we as web or app designers have to deal with it. So this that I've been writing, I've been writing it in the index file of the root. We should add it to the index file of the project, and then we'll take a break, and then need to uh, change it as appropriate, of course. Um, so these two lines that we wrote, the brand new two, the two new fav icons, we should copy those, copy those lines of codes, lines five and six, and uh, paste into the same place as the uh, fav icon in the index file of the web app and change your paths. Dot dot slash because that says from the current location exit up one level, go back one level in your path, in your folder structure and you'll find the right icons. What's that? Ultimately, we're going to remove it because they're not going to be necessary when we create the actual Android app. But just for completeness at the moment, if this was an, a project that was only going to live as a web app, then I would, I would have it. Yeah, but I can't assume that the web browser will keep it in memory or use it when we're in this actual web-friendly type of, or mobile-friendly type of project. I, I would feel better to know that I wrote the code and it's a few, you know, a few extra bytes, of, uh, one more kilobyte of, of code or whatever, but I would be, feel safer to cover the bases. Okay, so we'll, I'll show you one more type of fav icon and then we'll take a break. And this one, we're not, we're not going to implement it, but I'm just going to show you what it is and you can decide if it's useful or not. Uh, and I don't know how this will change with, uh, with the newest revelations. Revelations, have any of you heard what was revealed today, earlier, in the tech world? What kind of computers are we using here? Microsoft. Specifically Microsoft. Windows. Today, Windows 10 was announced. Wait a minute, what happened to Windows 9? They're making a clean break for it because apparently Windows 8 was not popular. So, Windows 10 is going to be the next version, released next year. So, I'm, I, I'm going to go on the record here and I'm going to say I liked Windows 8. I, I think it worked. If you've got a touch screen device, it works really well. I like to be able to to touch and do things, but uh, every tech site today and even non-tech sites were talking about Windows 10, uh, so you might want to look into it. But it's basically going to take what worked in Windows 7 and what worked in Windows 8 and make it work even better, Windows 10. So people want the de people want the start menu back. It's like people are very clingy. But here's a preview of the new start menu in Windows 10. You're going to click on your start button and it's going to be like classic and tiled at the same time. Let's see, is there a better photo? 
Yeah. Uh, that, well, you can kind of see it there. <laughs> so you're going to click on the Start menu. It's going to pop up on the side here, just like the classic Windows 7 Start. But then on the right side here, it's going to have the Live Tiles, which is a hallmark of Windows 8, which is that you've got uh, content that updates on its own on a regular basis, like your weather report or uh, your stock market data, or what I'm going to show you right now, your website data. I'm going to show you this, which as I said, I don't know what the state of it is going into Windows 10, but this works really well on Windows 8, which is a way to add dynamic content to your website so that if someone visits your website with Windows 8 or 8.1 and they bookmark your, or they pin your site to their start menu, they will get one of these live tiles that if you update your website, it'll update on their desktop. Now this is just a Windows 8 feature, but I don't know how it'll be implemented in the next version, but we can uh, we can see how it's done. Again, I'm going to show you I'm going to show this to you. We're not going to do it, but I'm going to show it to you in case you want to play with it. But if you go to this website, um, build my pinned site buildmypinnedsite.com. This is an unofficial Microsoft website. Uh, and I'll show you how it works. You'll be able to pretty easily set yourself up so that they give you the code to add this to your website so that if someone goes to your website on Windows 8, they select to pin your website to their start menu. It'll dynamically update once you update your website. Build my pinned site.com So if you haven't used Windows 8, basically the modern uh, the modern aspect of the operating system is that it relies on tiles, touch-based tiles that update on a regular basis, like a weather report. It automatically updates to show you what the weather is like, or your stock prices, or your Flickr account or whatever. But here what we can do is, just as a demo, we've got, okay, step one. You give it perhaps a title, My Site. And it's showing you previews here about what it'll look like on someone's Windows 8 uh, computer, either Surface or, or, a, or a, ta a notebook or desktop. There's a small size icon, a medium size, a wide size, a large size. Uh, I can choose a color, so I'll have a background color. I can choose an, an icon. Let me upload one of these icons that I made. So, the problem here, or the thing you have to do is, these are the sizes that the different tiles are. So if you if you load up one of the large, if you create an, one of these tiles, uh, one of these tiles of this size, 558, then you're big enough to encompass the different sizes. But ours is only 128, so if I select that size, You can uh, select each of the particular sizes and crop it as necessary. So I selected the 128 sized one and I drew a box around it so that it knows that's the size of my 128 sized icon. I gave it to a bit of a, a small icon, so if I go over to here and select this amount, it's going to look a little fuzzy because it's a bit small. And there's a wide version, so it'll give you a wide size. And then a big version. There's the transparency. Notice that it's purple behind it all because I've uploaded a transparent <coughs> ping. So here I can select different size, uh, different colors. That's the color that'll appear behind the tile. 
So I'm building a little bit of branding here for the Windows 8 people that come to my site and choose to pin my site to their start menu. If I want to make it dynamic, that takes a little bit more setup, but if your site has an RSS feed, so if you're using WordPress or, or many modern um, um, CMS programs that create RSS on your site, you just give it your RSS feed here, and whenever there's a new item added to your site, it'll update itself on everyone's, on everyone's start menu. That's out of our scope at this point, so I'm not going to fill it in. And then step three is they give you the code. A couple of different ways. You can either just copy and paste this code in your head tag, in your head section, and then it'll work. Or you can download the different sized icons and add one line of code here. So again, I, I'm just going to lead the horse to the water, and then you can do it if you want. But uh, this is specifically for Windows 8 computers. And if you want to go through and set that up, it's a kind of a cool feature. I've got that set up on my blog. So if you do visit my blog, vmcampus.com slash blog, on your Windows 8 device, and pin that pin that site to your start menu, you'll get a, the dynamic notifications when a new blog post is loaded or updated. There's also one which I haven't really explored for Windows 7. So Windows 7 has a much larger market share at the moment. You can uh, go through this and set yourself up so that your site looks well or looks good on a, um, on a Windows 7 computer. And so that was the. Uh, does it yes. Site it does via RSS. So what happens is there's there's the middleman of this particular site uh, that whatever. I think once you actually feed it in RSS, I think there's a time interval that you can set, and then as as you update your content, this is polling your site, and then it's going to feed that to every site that has pinned your site, every computer that has pinned your site. Yes. On the on the four or five lines of code there that they say to copy and paste. Mm -hmm. Where does it? I mean, I, I see that content has those, those different PNG files. So in addition to downloading these lines of code, don't you have to download those PNG files somewhere? Yeah, that, that's where it is right here about download the package. But it is a little confusing because it says add these meta tags and upload the PNG tile backgrounds to your server. And you get those tile backgrounds from this downloaded package. So then you can add these four line, uh, these five lines, plus your ping files. Or you still have to download it, and then it says upload these files to your root and only add this one meta tag. Because what's in the package is also something called this browser browserconfig.xml. And that one has a, the pointers to the other sized tiles. So you just add one, and then it works. Or you can add the, four, the five here. All right, so any questions on, on this? Again, you, you should try it out on your own if you choose. We're not going to implement it on our project. It's a little overkill, but I wanted to show you this, that might be useful to you. You know, your competitors might not have this. Here's a way for you to do something that they that they don't.